So, um, Johnny, first off, just to get us kicked off, um, I, we're going to go further into, of course, USP. We're going to go into um, some other topics, but I just want to start off by getting more into like real estate in general. Like, where did real estate and your journey with real estate, where did all that begin? Okay, first of all, thank you for having me here, and then Johnny's out. Um, so, real estate started as my, uh, you know, my family business, my family starting as a real estate developer back in China. And then um, I always loved real estate. So I started with the family, helping them building their real estate buyer back in China. And when we moved to the US, we started building our, my own real estate, a company of primary old, mm -hmm. uh, since 2012. So it's always been you know, family loved. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes people run from the family business. I ran from the family business. Probably some other people here that run from the family business. What kept you in the game? Like, how'd you know it was gonna be your thing? Okay, so um, I, I just like how you can build something that will last uh, longer than you do. Mm -hmm. So I, if I build something nice, like I'm, I'm actually more into watch real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, my family is all well, more in traditional, like uh, low income real estate, commercial real estate. I'm more in the watch real estate. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all those all those in real estate. I'm in a different sector of real estate. Mm -hmm. But I like build something that's nice that will last longer. People appreciate it. I like that feeling of achievements because something nice people love enjoy and then of course there's more money there too <laughs> <laughs> no one in this room likes money right <laughs> yeah i can tell nobody likes money around here um so the idea and this concept of 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 web3 and this coming to the the forefront and then just just for people that don't know my background so i mean i was in finance for almost 14 years so you know i was I can tell you my, my Bitcoin story, like when, when I learned about Bitcoin, I was on a trading desk and around that time, the Iraqi dinar was also being traded. In, there you go. So I remember like thinking and, and kind of melding these two. So the real finance geeks in here may remember this time period, um, but I didn't know. I didn't understand. And because of that, it took me a long time to come around to really get the thesis and to really fall in love with with a lot of that side of finance and even just the potential. Like, where did that, like, when did you see that connection? Did you get it immediately or like, what was your build up? Uh, my journey is similar to yours. I first heard about it from a friend of mine, told me to invest in Bitcoin. That was in 2012. I told him like, you're out of your mind. Yeah, did you think he was like, oh, that's a great idea. He's like, come on, let's do it. I think it was a scam, right? <laughs> And then I didn't really <laughs> invest in it, but then I've been watching because these things mentioned. So that I, means you're a prudent <laughs> investor, I understand, in the beginning. <laughs> right. So I've been watching how Bitcoin evolved, right? And then mm -hmm. um, I didn't get into it until I think end of 2021. Mm -hmm. That's when I see, okay, the adoption is really there. And I like the blockchain technology now is proven to be useful. Um, so I think that can actually benefit real estate. So that's why I started looking into how can I use the blockchain technology, not the Bitcoin, but the yeah. technology itself to make real estates better. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to, to do that. And then I was actually, initially I was looking for other projects to do the same thing. It's like, hey, is that every project that they did this, I use blockchain to make real estate investment like easier and yeah. better. And I couldn't find anyone to do this correctly. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it myself. Yeah. And was, if I was doing it, maybe there's a good opportunity there to make money. So mm -hmm. I did it myself. Any entrepreneurs in here? Oh, when you try to solve your own problems, sometimes it works very well. Sometimes there's a lot of pain in that, right? Yeah. Um, so you're so now you have this idea. You have this idea. You're, you're you can't find somebody else or some area to do what you want to do. Um, what's your next step? Like, how does that unfold? Take us on that journey. So, so the most the, the main reason I couldn't find anyone that would do it correctly because. A lot of people do the tokenization, they're not doing this in a compliance way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people use the tokens that are really in compliance with existing security laws. That means that there could be a backfire from you know yeah. being, going after SEC, as we all know what happened to CZ and Finance, right? Um, so I want to do this in a legitimate way that's in compliance with existing laws. So I, I could find an employer who does that. Uh, it's, it's because of the smart contract they have. It uh, does not, you know, allow you to, you know, verify the senders and the recipients. They have to make sure they're all KYC. You can't do that with the ERC twenty standard. So a lot of the technology back then was available, but nobody's using them to do correctly. So I basically says, look, I'm gonna do it correctly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it for myself. Then I can offer this same, you know, uh, process, and then to everyone else as a service, as a software. 
Mm. So, so now I can actually help other developers, real estate owners, to tokenize their assets, right? mm. make sure it's in compliance way. That word tokenizing. Let Let's start basic. What does that mean to tokenize an asset? Oh, uh, so tokenizing is basically um, is a different form, right? So if you bought a stock, and then the, or they or they give it to you, they're gonna give you stock certificates, right? They prove your ownership, right? So tokenizing means instead of giving a paper certificates, you get a, a digital token that lives on blockchain. So it's 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 on public ledger, so it's never gonna go away. You can alter the data. It's always gonna be there. So it's more transparent. It's, it's more secure. Right. Now, the, the most important is now to have a token, you can now trade it here and here on the blockchain to anybody who wants. And you can't really do that with a stock uh, certificate in a paper form. Right. Yeah. So okay. that's how I, I, I will explain it. And what, is that, what does that mean for liquidity? Like, what does that mean for liquidity? So, so it gives the liquidity you never had before, right? So if you have a stock certificate, like you said, you bought a company, and a private company give you a stock certificate, you can't really sell them. Right? You can't really trade the paper stock certificates, and then people can't authenticate that stock certificates. Maybe it's fake, people don't believe in it, right? Yeah. But if it's on blockchain, now people verify that easily on blockchain. Now they can easily trade it peer to peer. So it give you better liquidity. It just basically has the whole, I guess, after investment experience in now trading. You know, like gifts you have money wants, and you can't do that before. Right? So that's for example for if you have a stock. Now, say you bought Apple stock. Or you bought any REITs, then you really actually don't own the stock, right? You, you have a accounts with a brokerage. The brokerage is the one that actually has possession of the stock. Yeah. They're the one that hold, holds the possession of the stock. They're the one that has stolen this, right? So you can't really give that stock to anybody you want. You can't, you can't give the stock to your relative in other countries or wherever you want. You can't, the only option you have is to sell the stock and then get cash, or withdraw the cash, and then give to someone what you want, right? But now, imagine that, that stock become a token. And it's on blockchain. So you can actually now withdraw the stock into your own wallets on blockchain. I can give them one once, 20 percent And so relating that to real estate, like if somebody like that same thought process of, of liquidity, but now tokenizing the real estate, how does that apply? So there's just this so always tokenizing real estate. People do that with NFT, they tokenize the entire title of the property. I do that with a fraction of So think about like a real estate, like a REITs, right? real estate investment trust, where when you tokenize that, so you basically, instead of getting a, a share in this paper form, you're getting a share in the digital token form. It's the same ownership, fresh ownership you're getting when you're investing in REITs, but now you can actually, now you have ability to self custodian your own assets. You can now give to anyone you want 24 seven on blockchain. Mm -hmm. you just make, make the traditional investment experience better. So let's go further into the platform that you're creating and, and what that looks like and even the marketplace. So now that we've, we've kind of built out what tokenizing means, we built out, you know, some idea or some use cases for why you want to just tokenize an asset just in general. So now going to your going to your um, oh, there you go, going to your uh, your marketplace and what you're creating. Let's go further there. So the marketplace is basically where um any real estate sponsor developer can come here and then use my platform that to tokenize their own properties. They can do that with self-serving themselves, do that on the platforms, tokenizing it, name their ticker, they can choose what the ticker uh, the token is, and they can upload the blockchain. We use Ethereum to be on Ethereum. Yeah. And once it uploaded, they'll actually use our KYC database. And then they can start issuing the token to their investors. The investor can now trade it. Actually, once they bought it, you can now trade it peer to peer. Um, but as long as the investor is putting out a KYC database, because yeah. we do that because we want to make sure it's the same compliance. And then they can also offer the property seat on the private markets to sell those tokens to our investor on the marketplace so they can raise money on the private markets. Mm. What does that do for, for raising money? Like in terms of like accessibility, whether it's to the, you know, the developer that wants to get to the money or the investor that wants to get to the developer. Right. So, so this is basically similar to like a real estate uh, crowdfunding platform. You have to hear about it. Cadre, CrowdStreets, all these kind of players. It's similar to that, except we are different because we're making it tokenized now. So say if you, if you want to invest in private real estate, now the commercial real estate activity costs you millions of dollars, right? And you can't really just go and buy yourself unless you're really wealthy. 
Uh, if you were just like a, a credit investor, you have like a you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars laying around, you want to invest, really can't do anything with it. So people like that would go to uh, crowdfunding platforms, but go find, uh, they would go browse properties. There's a lot of investment opportunity, it could be development, could be value add, could be a stabilized property, you can choose your strategies. The minimum investment typically is $25,000 or more, so you can actually place money to different properties and just invest. And then it's, it's literally the same as the other one, except when you invest in traditional rental crowdfunding platforms, you really can't sell your shares. So the, the holding period is normally five years or longer. Yeah. And with crypto, everything is become so popular right now. Who wants to have the money locked up in five years? Like, nobody wants to, right? I personally invested in Blackstone, no one's locked up in 10 years. I hate it. I couldn't sell it right now. I started trying to sell it today. I couldn't sell it. So nobody wants to buy it. That's the problem. It's like on the private market, there's no liquidity at all. There's no one want to buy your uh, LP interest in those deals. So now, if you tokenize it and you have a marketplace, you can allow people to trade those tokens. And then now, if you have a liquidity that you never had before, you yeah. that. So people, it, most importantly, is if a credit investor is bought those shares, after you hold for 12 months, you can actually sell them to on credit investor. Mm. People don't know about that. So yeah. But you can actually do that. So, so most of crowdfunding platforms are only available to credit investors. So if you are not, if that was not over a million dollars, you're not eligible to invest in those real estate. So how do you get in? You can't get in. But with tokenized real estate now, you actually go ahead and go into the marketplace, tech marketplace to buy those tokens and re represent the ownership of those real estates. But you're qualified to buy it because after four months, it's locked, it's unlocked to sell to uh, on credit investors. So it gives the the credit investor who invests in private market an option to sell in the second market. Maybe you make more money on the, in the short term and they're <clears throat> and they give the uh, uncredited investor opportunity to invest in the real estate that was never available to them before. Mm -hmm. And then, because it's tokenized, so it's not only the US investor invest, it's the global investor. You can be in Africa, you can still become a, a fractional landlord mm -hmm. in the US property that where, where it was never available before. Mm -hmm. What, what's been the response that you received from this? For whether it's from the developers, the institutions, or you know the investors, like what kind of response have you gotten towards this? So um, the biggest hurdle is stellar liquidity, right? And everybody thinks it's a good idea. We really loved it. It was like, okay, well, how do I not get salaries afterwards, right? The liquidity is a big problem. And there another problem is the regulations. Mm -hmm. SEC still haven't had a clear uh, regulation about tokenization. But I've talked to a lot of people who know SEC because they don't plan to, they, because they don't think they need it. Because they think their security laws that was probably some time ago, it's, it's enough to regulate whatever yeah. is there. The, so based on how you pass, 99.9% .9 of the crypto project others is illegal. Yeah. So so I don't think SEC was on, was on a lot of pressure to regulate anything that's you know like, like this. So we did our platform in a compliance way with the existing laws. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, institution actually starts adapting this tokenization with existing security law. They're not like, oh yeah, that's good for their update regulation. They're not doing that anymore. Blackstone, um, <coughs> actually no, BlackRock yeah. and JP Morgan both started their own tokenization process. They did it on their money market fund. Mm -hmm. So they didn't do on real estate yet, but I think this tokenization really has benefit real estate the private equity the most. Because yeah. they never had they put it before. A money market fund is already liquid. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that makes a lot of sense. And as these bigger players get involved, then the you know the other investors, the masses, other things like that, it seems like the market would open up for more people that want to invest in it. Am I off on that, do you think? I or? mean it, it makes sense, right? So if you ask people who invest in crypto, you probably have like less than five percent of American people invest yeah. in crypto, right? If ask people who want to invest in real estate, you probably have more than some people say, hey, you only invest in real estate for sure. Right? It's more tangible, it's more, uh, it's more, it's safer, right? It's, it's not as volatile, right? Um, so uh, people just, like I said before, is like they're being shut out of the real estate market. They, they can't afford to buy a house, it's too expensive, what interest is too high, and their commercial real estate is even higher, you know, like better at the entry, right? This is how get in, and then the real estate private, private real estate crowdfunding platform is, is like only better with private investors. So I think this is really going to change the game, allow the average Joe to get in and to be a part of the real estate ownership to build their wealth. I mean, real estate, in my opinion, is the best tool to build the wealth because it's more stable. It's more stable. 
is tends to push over long term. It's more certain, right? The certainty is more important than, to me than than the, the profit, right? Because everything else is stocks, crypto. Yeah, you can make a lot of money, right? you can lose a lot of money, right? but real estate is more certain. So this is my opinion is the best tool to build wealth. I think these tokenizations may help a lot of you know the average people just start like getting a real estate ownership game to start building their wealth. Um, so Johnny, final question on my end, um, your vision for the platform going forward. We're many entrepreneurs in the room, let's dream for a moment. Where do you see this thing going? Give me the vision. Okay, so. Yeah, the big vision, come on. So, I want to show a camera with the big vision. So so the big vision is like, if I could, I want to, I want to make USP the, the house brands for tokenization yeah. that tokenize as much uh, properties in the US as possible and have the whole global investor and use USP to get into real estate game, to build that wealth, to change the life. That's kind of like on our level.